On today's World Inside, China to go full steam ahead with reforms toward the national unified market. What do they mean for the economy? How far and wide will these changes be? And China's bid for food security and seed self-sufficiency. How to best achieve those goals, in the words of a Chinese scholar, on rural development. Software and the, and the hardware together, we may set up the base. Here's our host, Tian Wei. Hello and welcome to World Inside. I'm Tian Wei. China seeks to double efforts in building a unified national market. A guideline has been issued on breaking local protection to smoothen the flow of economic circulation. The guideline covers energy, technology, property rights, protection, and also market regulation to fix persistent problems in market-oriented reforms. Plans to carry out standards of goods and services will be rolled out. The unified national market is seen to improve the efficiency and growth of China's domestic market. So what are the major steps in building the unified national market? How can the policies aid economic security and development? For deeper insights, let's loop in our panelists, three Chinese economists. For the so-called unified national market, joining us in Shanghai, Wang Dan, chief economist of Hang Seng Bank, China, in Shenzhen, Xiao Geng, director of the Institute of Policy and Practice with Shenzhen Finance Institute, Chinese University of Hong Kong. Also in Hong Kong, we have Edward Xie, chairman and CEO of Gaofeng Advisory Company. Thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen, for joining us. My special greetings, uh, first of all, to Ms. Wang Dan in Shanghai. I hope uh, everything with you and family are doing well. Uh, yes, I'm hanging in there. Uh, hopefully this will be under control in no time. Thank you so much, ma'am, for joining us. Now, tell me more. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, about your thoughts about this proposal for the unified national market. What exactly does it mean, uh, Professor Xiao? Well, this is a document that uh, I think has been preparing for a very long time. Uh, the objective is actually to uh, improve the quality of Chinese market, uh, particularly in terms of the scale and also the competition. Uh, basically, China, uh, uh, the United States has a unified uh, market for a long, long time, and uh, its advantages are so obvious. Mm -hmm. And China, I think, uh, uh, is trying to do the same thing. Uh, but was China not a unified market, Professor Xiao? In well, what way uh, it wasn't? Uh, China has been trying to build the unified market, and in many aspects, it's already a uh, unified market. But uh, the local uh, protectionism uh, and uh, also uh, in terms of the rules uh, of the game, and uh, you know, it, it's quite different uh, across regions. For example, uh, you know, along the coastal uh, cities, you will see. Uh, companies, uh, you know, people is coming from uh, all China, uh, but in uh, remote, uh, uh, you know, uh, other uh, Northwestern, uh, West, uh, you know, some uh, cities, you know, they uh, actually are quite limited uh, in, in terms of uh, labor market and uh, also, you know, uh, uh, banking and the credit market. Uh, so, uh, the, the the difference uh, is quite uh, uh, quite big uh, in, in the factor market uh, and also uh, for example some cities you see uh, the taxis uh, they are all uh, you know coming from the same city uh, uh, produced in the same city uh, so so yes the, uh, people do feel different uh, uh, you know in different uh, cities different provinces you, you feel quite different I see. Uh, yeah so here comes the question uh, miss wang so what kinds of uh, unified uh, market will this be uh, what kind of either standard is it going to be the standard of the most advanced the most developed areas or is it going to be the standard of uh, uh, the relatively 
middle sized or a medium uh, level. Uh, so the standards become very important if we talk about the unified market. Are we going to have the the best ones doing even better, or are we going to have every everyone becoming more average uh, than it used to be? Uh, so that's a very interesting question, isn't it? Uh, yes. When we talk about standards, it cannot be a one standard to fit all. And it's not one standard to fit all services and goods for sure. Now, China is such a diverse market with such a huge population. And what we're talking about here is, in fact, for key markets, key goods, key services, there has to be some kind of standard that are uh, followed by most market participants. Mm. Uh, from this sense, I think it has to be something average, probably more towards the less developed regions rather than the coastal region. Mm. Give me some example about the possibilities or categories you are referring to. Uh, for example, one thing I think is very important is when it comes to the IP protection. Because when companies issue lawsuits in different cities and different provinces, they often get different results. Now, legislation is all the same across the region, um, but when it comes to execution, it's so different. Mm -hmm. So China has to make sure that this kind of enforcement can be done so that the legal cost of doing business in China can be lowered. Mm. Now, Mr. Xie, do you see this has been a task uh, for a long time and now only being realized, or this is uh, under certain urgency of the international uh, changes, international environmental ch environment changes, as well as the domestic uh, uh, urgencies? I think it's actually a result of both. Uh, in my consulting work over the years, actually a key question for my clients, in particular the foreign clients, is whether or not China is a national market or China is a series of local markets. Because from the multinational company standpoint, where they came from, either the USA or Western Europe and so on, is pretty market driven, pretty market oriented. So, you know, they, they knew how to play the game there. But when they came to China, they realized that something may be different. And so they constantly asked that question to us, actually. And we help them to divide the question. So this question or this issue has been around for uh, for some time, for a long mm -hmm. time, actually. And it's been evolving. So there's a historical backdrop to that. But more recently, as we know, the uh, both the global conditions as well as the local conditions here in China are a bit volatile. Actually, one would say is becoming quite extremely volatile. And so from the Chinese government standpoint, it actually makes more sense to ideally stabilize the parts that they can stabilize, which is the local economy mm -hmm. that they can control, which is therefore the so-called local circulation of economics, whereas the external circulation, which is subject to a lot of volatility, which is not entirely under China's control, um, China needs to manage that, but at the same time, it's not possible to manage it at all by mm. the Chinese. So it is propagated, it is manifested because of some of the short term issues or immediate issues, yeah. but it's also against a historical backdrop. Miss mm. Wang, I would assume uh, you were born at a time in China when the country has gradually adopted uh, uh, the uh, reform and opening up policy and see the overall process of it and also personally prospering like many others around China uh, throughout that process. But, you know, just one thing very important for our generations, that is, you know, what is going to be, you know, mainly one single market and one market alone, like uh, for China, uh, with the very um, volatile uh, external uh, circumstances that uh, Mr. Xie mentioned. Uh, Ms. Wang, do you see the economists have ever done much research about that, about the capabilities, about the vitalities of that market? Well, the main engine for the past 40 years of China's economic miracle was considered to be the local competition. So the different regional economies have adopted different policies and try to get ahead uh, in terms of GDP growth, attracting foreign investment, etc. So now this model seems to be going to an end. 
because there's a huge pollution during the process and the local competition has resulted a big waste in investment. And now China is trying to change its growth engine. And we are looking at this unified market uh, and think whether it is planned economy again. And the economists have different interpretation of this. But as far as I can see, this is the market reform that's necessary for China to go to the next step. Because the trade barriers and administrative barriers now are the main hurdles for China to move to the next stage. Uh, we have seen the most recent case actually last December when Guangdong government actually sued the Shenzhen government for imposing extra licensing for those transport companies from outside regions. And this has created this hostile regional competition environment and it's certainly not good for China's transition in this new phase. Mm. One would assume that uh, these are heavy tasks, uh, very complicated tasks when it comes to the or creating one unified market. Uh, why do we believe that we have more confidence to do it now than we used to? I think now China is well prepared in the sense that it has done several critical reforms already and accumulated good experiences. Such For as example, mm. a unified pension system within a country. It was an extremely difficult reform because the pension account used to be held on county level uh, between different type of commercial banks. And then the provincial government collected all those accounts and combined them together within a decade. Mm. And now we see this kind of new unified system that actually works. And the next step is to do similar tasks for say uh, data, labor, and it's going to be a long-term goal and it requires a lot of effort and there there will be a lot of political pushback from the local government mm -hmm. but i guess china now has seen the success from the past so given all those economic headwinds in its economy right now it's not a bad time to do some of the structural reforms mm. now mr xie this is not necessarily a very appropriate comparison but at the size of china's economy is really big as uh, now it could be even equivalent to that of the european union now mr xie uh, if you think about how the European Union, they are trying to work out their trade policies. How do you, how do you see, you know, the experiences of others and how would that help China to do this very important, utmost task? Yeah, I think the difference between Europe and China is that China is a single sovereign state, whereas Europe consists of a uh, a number of different sovereign states. So the situation in Europe, uh, by definition, is more complicated than that in China. I say in China, we do have the benefit of uh, being one, in a way, unified sovereign state and a, a very strong government. And uh, along the way, uh, you know, while we have embraced the market forces as a key mechanism for allocation of resources, technology has also evolved a great deal over time. And uh, today, we can actually use technology to break down many of the barriers that we have had in the past. And so I think the basic principle of this reform is going to be allowing companies or regions to decide on what they need to do from their own standpoint of what is their best competitive advantages. Mm. So what are they good at and decide on focusing on that area of competitive advantage and focusing on leveraging the levers that the government provides to them, like data, like uh, anti-monopoly measures, like uh, technology and so on, so they can then best leverage their capabilities or competitive advantages to the best benefit to themselves. Hmm. So I, I see that you know it's, it's very viable for China to make it happen. Of course, it, it, it's not a short term, you know, right away, it can be done right away. Right. But the, the idea is there and that we now have the underpin and the conditions to make it happen. Mm. You are based in Hong Kong, so many would wonder what this means for the Greater Bay Area, which of course one of the most important initiatives China's central government uh, put out in recent years. 
Yeah, uh, thank you for asking the question. Actually, when uh, Professor Shao was talking about at the very beginning that this has been studied and uh, investigated by the Chinese government for some time, I understood this as being the Chinese government have been using a number of pilot regions to try this out. Of course, in the Yangtze, the Yangtze Delta River Delta uh, uh, region and the Jinjinji in the Beijing Tianjin area was another major region. The Greater Bay Area here in Shenzhen, uh, Guangdong, and now uh, Hong Kong uh, is also a major pilot area. And I think the, the experiences in these pilot areas actually have given the central government some indication and some degree of confidence that this can be done. So from the Greater Bay Area standpoint, you know, what we are doing is to identify our sources of competitive advantages. What are we good at? If we look at the nine cities in Guangdong plus Hong Kong and Macau, what's our strength actually? And how can we leverage our strength to grow in this unified uh, domestic market that we're now talking about? Mm. Uh, Professor Xiao, we've seen uh, local competitions in China, which uh, to a certain extent uh, could be in certain cases uh, a waste, but in many cases, it is really encouraging uh, every locality to be more competitive and encourage them to think what is the best way out to stand out. Now, that competition needs to be encouraged, but at the same time, uh, to create a unified market with the state playing a relatively much bigger role. Uh, how do you reconcile these uh, two approaches? Well, actually, the unified market is to encourage uh, specialization by reducing transaction cost. And this will be achieved by uh, two aspects. One is for the government uh, to do better service in defining property rights, resolve property rights disputes, and providing some soft infrastructures. Uh, and th in this way, uh, the market then can compete more effectively. Uh, uh, across the nation uh, and uh, all the factor markets will flow you know much much better so in a way uh, this is a partnership between uh, government on one side and the market participants on the other side mm -hmm. and in this process uh, you know problems uh, uh, like uh, monopoly and local protectionism will be eliminated so so in the end uh, there will be more competition uh, not just uh, to the company and the individual level, but also at the regional level so that they can take their competitive advantage by specializing in what they do best. Mm. I want to thank the three of you for joining us and discuss this very important topic likely to be an important transition in terms of policy and also in terms of China's development for years to come. Thank you so much for joining us. Wang Dan, Xiao Gang and Edward Xie. Really appreciate it. Thank you.